This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International as well as Eagles Saving Nations. Please go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. I have with me Bishop Tobias Niamwaya out of Kenya. That's in East Africa. Tobias, welcome back. Thank you again. Tobias lives in Kenya. Uh, we go way back to 1987. And in 1992, God gave me a word for the nation as well as the president. In fact, I'm going to read that. It says, My name is Jonathan Hansen. I'm an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, residing in Kenya. At that time, I did. I minister both locally and internationally. The following word has been very difficult to give. Some hypocrites will scream racist. But God does not look at skin color or nationality, only the heart. God loves the people of Kenya, and so do I. God, in his love, mercy, and grace, is calling the church in Kenya to repent of their disobedience of the word of God, to draw nigh unto him so he can forgive and restore the land. Out of faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ, I share with you what the Lord is allowing to come upon Kenya. Now, on June 4th and 18th, 1992, the Lord woke me up out of a deep sleep and gave me a message for the nation of Kenya. The reason why the nation of Kenya is in trouble today is because most of the professing Christians have the knowledge of God, but they do not have relationship with God. They, like Lucifer, Adam, and Cain, have rejected the known ways of God and have brought on the consequences of their disobedience. The pastors, leaders of most of the churches in Kenya are in reality serving themselves, not Jesus Christ. Instead of teaching the people the ways of God, they are teaching the people by their own testimonies, both in preaching and and personal lifestyle to rebel against the teachings of the Bible. Today's church leaders are not instructing the people to obey the Holy Scriptures or to pray for the president and bring about peaceful change in a godly manner. Instead, they're going directly against the Bible, speaking words of slander, strife, discord, rebellion, and anarchy. People are plotting revolt, curse, and openly malign maliciously. They criticize the president because pastors are in sin and serving themselves in the name of Christ. Now, I'm going to read the rest of it, Tobias, but uh, so far, do you remember this prophecy? Yes, I do remember. In 1992, I think that time I was a young guy. <laughs> I wasn't even married then. I think I got married in December of that year, 1992. Well, I know I, I spoke that. it on Kenya Radio for, thir I think it was 35 straight weeks. I passed out 50,000 copies highlighted warning in red. Tobias, what do you think about what I've read so far? So far, actually, the, 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 during that time, the president that was in charge that time has passed on. He actually was voted out in, 19, in 2002, and then uh, this new president that has come in, two other presidents have come in, actually three presidents have come in since then. But then again, those prophecies, that you, whatever you've said there, those... Most of them have come to pass. We've seen revolt. We've seen people rebelling. We've seen, you know, a lot of stuff that's, that I mentioned they have done, except for one that is actually now is, the, <laughs> is being incubated, to, so to speak. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the prophecies mm. as far as the bullet points. Mm. But I, I shared that uh, the pastors, leaders of most of the churches in Kenya are in reality serving themselves, not Jesus Christ. Instead of teaching the ways of God, they are teaching the people by their own testimonies, both in preaching and personal lifestyle, to rebel against the teachings of the Bible. What about that statement? Yeah, it could be true, Pastor. You know, in every quarter, in every quarter, wherever you are, whether it is in the law enforcement, in the government, in the religious sector, there are always cliques of people that are not right. The bad ones, but also there are few that are good. Yeah, we're not talking about the good ones. There's good pastors all through the world, yes. good pastors all through America. Mm. But the problem is there's not near enough. Generally speaking, 
this statement that God said, I believe, is absolutely true. How do you tell? Kenya's falling apart. It's never got better. It's got worse, worse, and worse. Now, if you had a healthy church in Kenya, this wouldn't be the case. It's not healthy. Yeah, it's not that healthy, of course. Not healthy. <laughs> yes. They yeah. fight each other. They kill each other. I, they've even killed each other after elections. Yeah, so this church is not healthy in Kenya. Of course, there has, there's been a lot of betrayal. Pastors against pastors are betraying one another. Which is, which uh, tells about the, the 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 health of the church in itself. Yeah, it goes on to say they are directly going against the Bible, speaking words of slander, strife, discord, rebellion, and anarchy. I mean, that's happened. Yes, that has happened. That has happened. I mean, uh, people are plotting revolt, curse, and openly malign maliciously. Mm. So. You know, that at that time was, we were talking about President Moy. President Moy, they yes. finally, uh, they forced on Moy as far as uh, uh, the world, the United Nations, America. Uh, now there's a two-term limit. So 10 years, well, he ran out of his capability because he was actually in over 20 years. But the point is, what it's saying right then I believe is still going on in Kenya today, Tobias. Yeah, there hasn't been much difference because people are speaking one thing, but they're doing the other thing. So it just just like what we say in the past is uh, hypocrisy in the church itself. There hasn't been that real repentance as far as the church is concerned in Kenya. Many, many people today who call themselves Christians no longer help preserve the nation. They lie, cheat, steal, fornicate. Commit adultery, have abortions, live in homosexuality, curse, gossip, and commit every sort of evil and uncleanliness the heart can imagine. The Christians today say, praise the Lord, shake your hand, like Judas kissing Jesus, then stab you in the back by accusing you falsely. They are filled with jealousy, bitterness, selfishness, and guilt. Today's pro professing Christians in Kenya have broken and are breaking the laws of God and are about, about fit for nothing but the dunghill. Pastor Tobias? Yeah. To be honest with you, Pastor, I think our main, main, main problem as Kenyan pastors is nothing less than the ethnic, ethnic uh, hatred. The ethnicity in Kenya is thriving. Pastors don't trust one another if you're from this race from the, or that race. They don't trust you. Unless I'm from my race, my race will trust me. So that is the problem we have. And I pray that that would somehow, we will rise up against above that. I know. People, uh, they call it racism in America. Yeah. And they, they, they call, if you're not of the same color of skin, possibly you're a racist. But you and I were talking about, and, and tribalism is racism. And uh, if you want to look at it that way, there's a lot of racism in Kenya. Yeah, the eyes. Luke 14, 34, we need to read that. It says, because of rejecting the truth, the knowledge of God into one's heart, so a relationship is developed. The born-again be uh, believer needs to have an ongoing relationship. But again, if there's not that ongoing relationship with God, then all of these things manifest. Isaiah 59, 12 through 13 is quickly coming to pass. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us and our iniquities, we know them. And transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. From the heart words of falsehood. Pastor Tobias? Yes, there's a lot of false, <laughs> falsehood. There is no real repentance, like I said in the past. There's a lot of people who say this, but on, on, on the other hand, they do that, which is contrary to the word of God. And uh, it's our prayer that we will read, study the word, and do what the word says, the word of God tells us to do. Now I'm going to read Luke 14. 34 it says salt is good 
But if salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? 35. It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. In other words, the church, God is saying, is becoming saltless. Yes. Can't be used. It's fit for nothing but to be thrown out. Yes. That's a strong indictment. Certainly. Yes. Yes, because salt is... Actually, I come from uh, Africa where we used to use uh, salt for preservation of, of beef or meat. And so, as pastors, so to speak, by pastors in, in Kenya or everywhere else, we are supposed to be salt so that we can preserve the, the gospel and preserve the nation as it is when we are preaching the right gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, you're watching, listening to the Warning Program. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, president of both World Ministries International and Eagle Saving Nations. Worldministries.org, worldministries.org. You've got to become a member of Eagle Saving Nations. We've got to have another, another great awakening, a national repentance in America, Kenya, and nations all over the world because nations are going to be falling. Now, I have with me Bishop Tobias Nehemiah, again, Kenya, East Africa. So, Tobias, it says, warning, the word from the Lord is this to Christians in Kenya. One, God is going to judge this nation. Two, a spirit of rebellion is sweeping the nation, followed by fighting. Three, a spirit of drought is sweeping the nation, followed by famine. Four, a spirit of Islam is sweeping the nation, followed by riots. Five, finally, if the Christians, especially the pastors of this nation, do not repent of their hypocrisy, start to develop a relationship with God, then the Christians will lose their religious freedom. Tobias? Yes. <laughs> those, all those things that you talked about, they, they've mentioned there, many of them have taken place, and some of them are still taking place. Right now, as I talk to you, there's a lot of... It has never rained. It's not rained for a while in in a long time in most areas. So there's a famine, and actually not just famine. You know, you know when there's famine, there is hunger. And when people are hungry, they will always, they can fight against you. You know, you don't play with a, an hungry dog. An hungry dog will bite you. Oh, that's it. But uh, the one that you've said that is really is more serious is the spirit of Islam. Right now, as I talk to you, a lot of Islamic leaders or Muslims are in key positions in Kenya. And uh, any time they can take over. No. No. Yeah, we, ladies and gentlemen, Islam is not the God of America. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not the God of the Bible. Uh, Jesus Christ is a living God. If you say Jesus Christ in Islam is God, they'll kill you. It's blasphemy. In their mm -hmm. Quran, he's a prophet to come back to kill the Jews and Christians and usher in the world under Allah. Yes. We do not serve the same God. And a lot of naive people in America think we do. We do not. It says, finally, if the Christians, especially the pastors of the nation, don't repent of their hypocrisy, start to develop a relationship with God, the Christians will lose their religious freedom. That's what you're worried about. Yes. We will lose our Christian, uh, Christian freedom because once those religious people take over, there's going to be persecution, uh, and you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't escape it anyway because they will deny you. You won't go, you won't go to church. You won't, you won't find a place to pray, or whatever it is. So it is a serious thing. Yeah. Says church people who call themselves Christian, if you fear God, you must have a change of heart, yes. develop a true relationship with God. You must be born again. If you fail to hearken to this warning, there will be fighting, even family against family. There will be famine. You will be persecuted by another religious group. The nation will lose its religious freedom, and the nation will not fully recover until Jesus returns. Tobias? Yeah, you know, many people do not understand when we talk about persecution from other religion. But it's a serious thing because as a religion, when they take over, they are serious, they're committed to their God, and they think they are serving their God when they persecute the Christians. So it's a serious thing that uh, I, I, I appeal to those that are watching this that we need to really take our position and, and defend our Christian uh, faith. I'll tell you what, 
in Islam, if they ask you to say their words of conversion, and if you fail, they'll cut off your head, mm -hmm. and they don't care. They have no guilt because they really think they're doing you a favor. They think they're sending you to heaven. They'll kill you, Tobias. They think they're going to heaven by doing that. That's what they think. Yeah. But when they kill you, yeah. as a, uh, so they there's call no you, guilt. They, they don't call, care. Yes, they call you an infidel. So an infidel is nothing to them. They think they're doing their God a favor. <laughs> we'll do that to you. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yes. They have no guilt. Yeah. They have no guilt to cut your head off. No. <laughs> they think you're doing you a favor. Yes. They're going to save this infidel. Yes. Of his deception. Exactly. There is hope. The prophecy is literally being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Second Chronicles 7, 14. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14. You know, that always applies, Tobias. Yes. Uh, the unfortunate thing, let me just go back to this. I was watching, I was reading something just recently when I'm here, and I was watching this this video, and they, they were picturing a, a cathedral in England, and the cathedral that was being used as a church has been deserted, and now there was a Muslim standing there and saying, sooner or later they are going to turn that into a mosque, meaning the Christians are no longer longer concerned about their Christian faith. So we're leaving this to the other religion to take over. All over the world, we are coming under a spirit of deceivableness. Mm. Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith? Mm. There's a, a real struggle right now, a fight for faith. Yes. We are in a spiritual warfare. If your heart is not pure, repent. Before all is fulfilled and you lose your religious freedom. That's, again, at the end of this Prophecy for Kenya. The prophecy was recorded June 8, uh, 1992, and given to the church leaders at that time. So, Tobias, I'll tell you what. Uh, you just look at what's going on right now, and that prophecy is still coming to pass. Amen. Well, I'm worried about the Christian the Christian community we have all, all over the world. I think there's been a lot, to me, Christianity has become, the Christians themselves have become very casual. They don't take Christianity seriously. People are just casual in the way they handle their Christian faith, in the way they, they pray and read the word. And, and, and so it's just not important to them. Until they, one day they realize, when, when that is all over, is when they realize, oh boy, we made a mistake. No, you're exactly right. You know, that's the whole purpose for Eagles saving nations. Tobias, you're a member of it. We need it in Kenya. We need it yeah. all over the world. Eagles yeah. saving nations. Yes. It's to wake up Christians to the reality of the situation that is taking place in their nation. To expose the forces that are attempting to replace their country under the morality of God, defining the Bible with tyranny. Mm -hmm. Tyranny is coming to Kenya and every nation if they don't come back to the Lord. If yeah. they don't put the Lord first in their life. If they don't make their nation, so to speak, a sheep nation, that's what we call a nation under God. Um, the church has to rise up, Tobias. Yes, there, need to, there is a need for recommitment, recommitting ourselves to God and uh, being faithful to that commitment so that uh, we can be able to do what God has called us to do. Again, Eagle Saving Nations, we're trying to get into the stadiums and have a great awakening where the power comes down like at Pentecost. Christians can go forth with power and authority, not fear and intimidation, because truth takes away deception, prayer brings conviction, and they can take their nation back and make it under God. Tobias, that's the point for Eagle Saving Nations. Yes, you're right. You're right. I was reading it and I was impressed with the vision and the mission of the Eagle Saving Nations. If the churches and the Christian would rise and uh, call for a revival in our nations, then we probably might be back where God has been wanting us to be. To educate Christians in every nation regarding the goals 
and operations of the forces aligned and associated with the New World Order. That they're orchestrating one crisis after another throughout the world to move mankind into a world government as described in the book of Revelation. They're doing this in America. They're doing it in Kenya. They're doing it in South America. They're doing it everywhere. Tobias? Yes. It is everywhere. We need to rise up and do what God is calling us to do. It's serious. And it is th this is the time. If you don't, we wish more. We won't, we won't have that time because Christ is coming back so soon. Join Eagle Saving Nations, worldministries.org, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. If you're in Kenya, every Christian should join it. If you're in Colombia, South America, every Christian should join it. If you're in Malaysia, every Christian should join it. If you're in America, every Christian should join it. The New World Order is trying to topple the nations right now, trying to bring us under tyranny, trying to take away our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, the mark of the beast is just about here. We need another great awakening. Pastor? Yes, there is there's a need for an awakening. There is also, I think there is, uh, if you would allow me to say this, there is that uh, teaching that goes in, going on that some people believe that Christians don't, are not going through are not going to go through persecution. Uh, that is their stand. But me, I believe otherwise. If Jesus went through persecution, who are we not to go through persecution? Jesus said in Mark, I think Mark, Mark eleven, Mark uh, ten thirty says, will be we will have those blessings plus persecution as well. So persecution will come. Worldministries.org, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Please join Eagle Saving Nations now. Also, give us your very best donation so we can stay on your local program. Again, may God richly bless you. Now, listen and watch The Science of Judgment. Order that book. Reverend Dr. Jonathan Hansen has written a book titled The Science of Judgment. God is predictable. There is a scientific pattern for the rise and fall of nations throughout history. We need to understand the laws or the rules of design regarding prophecy and judgment. When it comes to the laws of judgment and prophecy, denominational or personal belief systems have nothing to do with the reality or the certainty of the rule of judgment. Dr. Hansen's objective is to warn leaders of nations of the second coming of Jesus Christ and the plagues or judgments that are coming upon these peoples and nations that reject Jesus Christ as Savior according to the Scriptures. Dr. Ronald E. Cottle, founder and president of Christian Life School of Theology, states that this book is a must-read for Christians and other leaders in the United States and in other nations. It is clear, powerful, and well-reasoned. We all owe a debt of gratitude to Dr. Jonathan Hansen for the years that have gone into the research and writing of the science of judgment. This book has more than 300 pages, divided up in five sections. Part one, The Science of Judgment, has chapters titled such as The Laws Regarding Prophecy and Judgment, Patterns of Apostasy, Purpose of Chastisement, Standards for Justice and Mercy. God forgives when people repent. God holds nations responsible for what leaders do. Parental Responsibility. The Feasts of the Lord. Solomon's Transgressions and Their Consequences. Righteous Kings versus Evil Kings. Example of King Jehoshaphat. Ungodly Alliances. God is predictable. God holds people accountable. Man can turn into an intelligent beast to do evil. Section 2. The Deception of the Theory of Evolution has chapters titled as Problems with the Theory of Evolution, Evolution and Racism, Darwin's Hatred of Christianity and its Fruit. Section 3, Why Must There Be Judgment, has titles such as The Fall of America and Her Destruction, Cult Christianity, Radical Liberal Politics. Section 4, Kings, Dictators, and Presidents, with the following chapters listed as People Choose Their Nation's Leaders, Qualifications for Godly Leadership. Romans 13, Delegated Authority. Satan is in charge of this world, not Jesus. If laws violate conscience, we must disobey. Finally, part five, so what must we do? These chapters are listed as, we are in a cultural war, our responsibility to a hostile government, the Christian's science of judgment. With turmoil ever increasing throughout the nations, as Bible prophecy is coming to life right before our very eyes, one must read The Science of Judgment to have a clear understanding of these events and the reasons why. Call 360-629-5248, 360-629-5248, that is 360-629-5248, and request your copy of The Science of Judgment. 
for a donation of $35 or more, plus shipping and handling. Thank you, and shalom.